accounting equation and Excel. Receive payment on account, putting it into a clearing account, and then making a deposit, transferring it from the clearing or holding account to the checking account. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation with Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster it's kind of like how in like the matrix when neo learns kung fu or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying so get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you might want to begin back there or just construct your own worksheet as we go from here or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically working within a template now. However, we will be adding to that template as needed as we go through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing this time. Quick recap of what we have done. We're building our bookkeeping system with the use of the accounting equation. It acting in a similar fashion as a trial balance from which we will construct the financial statements, balance sheet, and income statement. We started by adding beginning balances where imagining came from a prior accounting system, then looked at some transactions typical for the startup of a business, the need for capital that is cash, so that we can buy stuff with it that we use to generate revenue. Cash could come from the owner, cash could come from a bank in the form of a loan oftentimes. Once we had the cash, we then used it to purchase the stuff we need to help generate the revenue, which is going to be the fixed assets, property, plant, and equipment, as well as the inventory. Then we started our normal business operations. We're selling guitars over here and doing service items of guitar lessons is the idea. And we're continuing with the sales for the first month of our new accounting system at this time. So this time we want to be uh, recording a sale that's taking place, it's going to be a service item sale and the deposit. So we'll see uh, the issue of having multiple sales taking place, imagining that they might be happening, say, at a cash register or a payment through a third party processor, such as a credit card or a PayPal or Stripe or something, noting that we have that intermediary problem that we want to keep on practicing in that if I deposit that directly into the checking account, then it might not tie out to what's going to be on the bank statement because the bank statement is not going to get hit until multiple deposits that we have received are grouped together because of the way the credit card company is working or the PayPal or the Stripe uh, or because we're collecting cash in a cash register and depositing it all at one time, not sale by sale. So in other words, 
if we have a system where we uh, invoice someone, for example, and they pay us electronically, it going directly into our checking account with an electronic transfer, then we might be able to put it directly into the checking account, which would be great. That'd be nice and easy. However, we still have that kind of issue where they, the, it's not going to be a deposit form in some software that way. It'll be like a receive payment form, or if it was a sale at a cash register, it would be uh, the cash register form, the receipt form, instead of a deposit form. But that's not too big a deal. The bigger problem is that if we collect any intermediary of the combinations, like I'm saying here with regards to PayPal, with the Stripe, with the credit cards or cash in the cash register, then we're going to have to put it into this undeposited funds. Now, remember, this is a, something that you don't see in book problems oftentimes because they just look at it as cash that we're depositing into cash and they kind of skip over the whole bank reconciliation issue. But that bank reconciliation issue is a big issue, of course, in practice and something that's going to be key around how you build your accounting system as to how automated the system will be. How much can you rely on the bank feeds? How much can do you have to alter just recording your information based on bank feeds, based on the accounting system? One of the issues that mess up bank feeds to record our financial transactions are accrual transactions. Accrual transactions having to do, for example, with, um, with accounts receivable. Cash register also can mess things up and intermediaries can mess things up credit cards and uh and uh paypals and stripes rather than going directly into the checking account all right so well, let's do this we're going to say on 125 we're going to say that we uh receive payment receive payment on account so we're going to imagine here what does that mean in textbook terminology this is something you might see in a textbook and we have to get the language correct, meaning we received a payment. That means we got some form of cash generally, might be an electronic transfer, might be an actual physical check, might be going through a credit card that's gonna then pay us. It might be going through a, a PayPal, a Stripe, it might be cash that we have received, right? Some type of form of payment that we're receiving on account, meaning, they're paying us. Usually we get money. Why? Because we provided goods or services. We do what we do. In our case, guitar, we sell them or we do guitar lessons. Or uh, it comes from us, the owner, possibly. But that doesn't happen as often. Or we take out a loan. So that means, uh, or in this case, we receive it on account. Meaning we did the work in the past. We're getting paid for work done but we did it already and have already recorded the revenue. So this is gonna decrease the accounts receivable. So then we need to know who it came from so we know which accounts receivable to decrease in our sub ledger. I'm gonna to go to the home tab, uh, alignment and indent. And then we're gonna say that we received the 3623. Okay, so that's gonna be a straightforward journal entry. Accounts receivable now is gonna go down by the 3623, notice that this account in accounts receivable doesn't tell us who paid us. It just records the transactions by date. The other side, we could put it into the checking account, but we're not going to. We're gonna put it into the undeposited funds account, imagining we're gonna to have to group it together and it's gonna get paid out by a Stripe or by PayPal, or it's in the cash register that we have to walk to the bank and risk our lives as we go through the tough streets in order to try to deposit the cash in the bank without getting robbed or without hurting any criminals because then you get sued. So let's put some zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. It's almost better to just get robbed than, than to stop the criminals from robbing you because then you get sued and the lawyers are worse than the criminals. Dang, lawyers are worse than the criminals, I tell you. Ugh, anyway. We're going to say that this is going to be equal to Anderson Guitars negative, And we're going to say this is going to be the uh, 3623. Uh, three. So we'll say enter. So there we have that. So Anderson Guitars, this is what we have thus far. Mr. Anderson uh, started out with the, the 5,000 from the prior system and then uh, we invoiced another one, then they paid us that 5,000. 
and now they're paying us the three six two three, which is the sum of these, I believe, right? Three six two three. Yep. So that means that if I sum up this column, this is the ending balance thus far for Mr. Anderson, which means it's all paid off. I have a rounding error of one, but I'm okay with that because I cut off the pennies. So let's copy this down, copy this down. Now also just realize that in a software system like a QuickBooks or a zero, you, you will see the same subledger giving us the balance per customer, but it also gives you more detail than that with the use of the forms. So within the accounts receivable, we're usually gonna have invoices increasing and then some kind of payment, like a payment form decreasing. And those forms then will also, we can link those together oftentimes within the software so that if I see the invoice and I go into it, it'll say paid on it. So that gives you another, again, another added level of audit trail that you can do in a, in a database program like a QuickBooks or something or zero, which is over and above uh, what you can usually get with just a sub ledger in like a double entry accounting type of system. All right, that's why those forms are gonna be important. All right, let's go back on over here. Let's do another one, otra vez, por favor. So we're gonna say the next one is uh, equal to, and with this, we're, no, we're not actually invoicing, we're just receiving payment on the invoice. I think I might have misspoke that on the intro. So we're gonna say once again, receive payment on account, receive payment on account, this one from Eric Music. Eric Music is the customer, they paid us, we imagine a check uh, that we received or an electronic payment that we received, possibly it went to the the uh, Stripe account, or we can imagine we're, we're at a cash register or something and they, they gave us the money for a sale that was made in the past, however, so once again, sale made on the, in the past, now we're receiving payment on it. That means accounts receivable is gonna go down. So accounts receivable is going down. I need to put a dollar amount there. How much did they pay us? We're gonna say it's 30450. Accounts receivable goes down and undeposited funds is going to go uh, up. So there we have it. Uh, uh, so there we have it. And then I'm going to put zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Doot, doot, and zeros across the board. And then we'll put the sub ledger in play for Eric Music, which is right here. Sub ledger is going to be equal to a negative. And they paid us, he paid us 30450 So let's see what the activity is in the account was here's the invoice 30450 which has now been paid off so eric music sub ledger is down to zero in eric's column bringing down the total here let's bring down the total that comes out to now we're at the 12757 which has still not been paid off within the accounts receivable balance that should tie out to what's in our general ledger let's see if that is indeed the case Here's our gen general ledger, and I'm gonna copy this down. Du, 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 du. So 12,757, I think that is what it was. Let's just double check it, 12,757. Uh, and 12,757, okay. I'm getting messed up because I should have done a balance here. Let's, before I get ahead of myself, let's put a balance between here. So last one to here, let's go. Let's put an underline underneath this. Let's, you're confusing people. You're getting ahead of yourself. Slow it down, man. Just slow down. Okay. Nice steady pace. Slow and easy. That's how the turtle wins the race. Nice and steady. Okay, so then we're going to say this equals the sum of the prior balance plus the current activity. Let's copy that across, copy that, Roger, pasting it, formulas only, pasting it, formulas only, and then pasting it once again, formulas only. Okay, let's copy this down. That should put us back in balance. Do, 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 do. I'm going to copy this down. Do, 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 do. And then we'll copy this down 
puts us back in balance. Nothing happened in the activity because two asset accounts were impacted. One went up and then one went down. Let's copy this down to this one. So once again, nothing happened for this one because one asset went up and one asset went down, but undeposited funds is going up and accounts receivable is going down within the asset category. All right, let's put the balance down here. Let's put another underline under these for formatting's sake. For formatting's sake. And put an underline here. And then we'll put an underline here. Put an underline here. And then we're going to sum this up. Equals, not there, here. Equals the sum of these two. Do, do, do. Enter. We'll copy that across the board. Totals, just the formulas. Don't mess up the formatting for formatting's sake. For formatting's sake, man. All right. We'll paste that across the board. And then we'll copy this down once again. And our balances should pull on down. That red should turn green. Let's put some un underlines up here for formatting's sake. And then... All right, so now we've got this money in undeposited funds. Now we're going to imagine that's in the cash register. That'd be a lot in the cash register because those are big sales. But we'd have a similar situation if they paid us into an intermediary account like a credit card or a Stripe or a possibly a PayPal which we then need to transfer from there to the cash account. I'm not gonna do it with two separate transfers so that they hit the cash account with two different dollar amounts, but with one transfer of the full 34,073. And, and so it's important to have the intermediary because that's what's gonna show on the bank statement. And if I put these two into the cash account rather than into the undeposited funds and then grouping them together in the cash account, when I reconcile, I'll have to tie these two things together. And that's the case whether you do bank feeds or not. You have to kind of keep that in mind. Bank feeds don't solve that problem as of yet, right? It doesn't, you have to, that's what we have to do. So we're going to say this is going to be uh, 125. And we're going to say this is going to be a deposit from the clearing account. The clearing account is what I'm calling this undeposited fund because it's just a holding account until we get the money properly grouped to put into the checking account. This is going to be for the 34,000, uh, 30,007, <laughs> 30,450 checking accounts going up. So we're going to the bank. We've got our, we got our bouncers. We've got our bodyguards out there with sticks. They got billy clubs, but they got a lot of padding on them and stuff. So they don't hurt the people that actually are trying to rob us because then we get sued. So they they hit them with like foam, like foam. They try to rob us and then they hit them with like the foam so that they can kind of stop them, but not like hurt them. They still sue us. It doesn't work, but whatever. They're the, they're the ones robbing. They're the ones doing the robbing. That's not, they, they want money now because you hit them with a foam, a foam billy club because they were trying to, Okay, this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Put some underline. Put an underline here. All right, we'll bring the balance down. And let's sum this up. Equals the sum prior balance uh, plus current activity. Copy that. And then we'll paste this across the board. And then we'll paste this across the board. And then we'll paste this across the board. All right, so there we have it. Okay, so then uh, let's, let's copy this down. Copy this down to see if our balances are still balancing. Still balancing on the ball. And then we'll put an underline under the zero underline. There we have it. Okay. So now we're at uh, 248,055 assets, liabilities at 90,000, 
344 equity, which could be thought of as the book value of the company because it can also be thought of as assets minus liabilities, 157,711. But in order to realize that 157,711, we'd have to sell the company for that amount or possibly sell our assets, which again, now at this point in time, oh, wait a second. Uh, there's a difference happening here of why this number should be, let me change this, 34073. And that should change everything automatically because I saw that I still had money in the undeposited funds. I improperly put the 30,000 instead of the 34, which is the combination of the two payments. So pardon me with that. So now we're at, okay, we're still at 157,711. So in order to get that money, if we were to liquidate the company, we would have to collect on the receivables, sell the inventory for at least the cost, get our short-term investments out of the stocks and bonds, sell our furniture and equipment for at least the book value, which would give us that 248.55 in cash. But before we distribute it to us, the owner, we'd have to pay off the liabilities, 15,000 to the accounts payable, Visa card, 1,000 sales tax payable to the government, 2,344 loan payable to the bank, 72,000. Then we'd have money left of the 157,711 that we can pay ourselves. That hopefully gives a little bit of an idea of what this equity kind of means. It's not, it's, it's not liquid <laughs> at, oftentimes because most of the time people aren't holding on to a bunch of cash and they have liabilities that they have to deal with. Instead, the business is there to invest the cash in inventory and furniture property plant and equipment to help generate revenue therefore you can't unwind it that easily that easily right you might be able to sell the whole thing maybe if people want to buy it but that's not the easiest thing to do as well because you have to sell a whole business right which can be difficult sometimes or you'd have to unwind everything selling the assets paying off the liabilities also remember that if you're a partnership you have to do that in order Otherwise, if you pay off the partnerships before you sell the assets and pay the liabilities, you might not have enough money to pay the remaining partners. So you have to make sure to uh, do that in the proper order. Just pointing that out. All right.